Hello and welcome to episode 18 of my English Sovereigns podcast. In this episode, I shall be talking about the reign of King Harold Hereford. Harold Hereford, whose name means nimble of foot, was never meant to be king when he technically became king in 1035. Upon Canut's death, the throne was bequeathed to half a Canut, who was Harold's half-brother, and was, unlike Harold, legitimate, his mother being Emma of Normandy, and Emma was married clearly to Canut, whilst Harold's mother, Elfgu, Elfgafu of Northampton, was not married to Canut, which meant that Harold was illegitimate, although he did technically still have a claim to the throne. Um, as a result, Harold was made regent, uh, but he didn't want to stop there. He tried to get the Archbishop of, Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, Ethelnoff, to crown him as king, but Ethelnoff was not forthcoming, and this was a bit of a problem for Harold, because you need the Archbishop of Canterbury to crown you as king if you're going to get anywhere. But eventually, uh, the Witan proclaimed him as king, which is, you know, arguably good enough, at least in Anglo-Saxon times, to show that you're the king. Um, and eventually, after a lot of bribery, um, Harold and his mother, Elfgafu, who, despite, you know, not having married Knut, was actually quite a good schemer, uh, managed to win for Harold the domain of the north, anything north of the River Thames, uh, for Harold to rule. Uh, and then, obviously, half Knut got the the... Wessex, essentially. The reason why half a Knut didn't put up a fight about this was because he was tied up in Denmark. He had a bit of local difficulty there because upon Knut's death, he was also the king of Denmark, um, and Denmark broke out into a few quite big wars then. Um, so he literally couldn't come back to claim his throne, and indeed couldn't come back to claim Wessex when he was given that. Um, and eventually in 1037, after Harold got some people to steal some treasure, from Emma of Normandy, who was still resident in England. Uh, Emma of Normandy was forced to flee back to Normandy, um, and this left basically Harold as the sole being in charge of the country, and so he was eventually crowned king in 1037. Um, and half Knut still just did nothing about this, because he was, not that he didn't want to, he was just so tied up in Denmark. Um, of his actual reign, there are very few sources and knowledge, um, although apparently there was a great gale in the year 1039. Uh, however much that fascinates someone, I don't know. Um, the only other thing we do know about him is that he was quite brutal to one of Ethelred's heirs. Um, Alfred Etheling turned up on English shores in 1036 and not wanting a you know a claimant from the House of Wessex to come and take the throne, especially when he had problems set maybe with half a canut. Uh, he was able to capture Alfred, blind him, and then leave him out on the road to die of his injuries, which sounds pretty brutal. Um, he was only 24 when he died in Oxford. Uh, like a lot of these kings who died quite young, it's quite uncertain as to how or why he died. But you could probably hazard a guess as to why. Or at least you probably could realise that it would benefit half a Knut's allies and indeed half a Knut to have his illegitimate half brother dead. Um, Harold was buried initially at Westminster Abbey. Uh, but upon half a Knut's accession in 1040, um, Harold's body was exhumed and then beheaded and then tossed into the River Thames, where it was found by a sympathetic fisherman, um, and then it was reburied properly. Um, so that's Harold's reign. The fact that there aren't that many things recorded about Harold may just be an unhappy coincidence, or it might just be he was not as notable as his father Knut, which is probably... A fair enough comment. Uh, obviously he was succeeded by half a Knut and he will be the subject of episode 19. Thank you very much for listening.